I'm Jackie McLaughlin. You're very welcome. And thanks for taking time out today just for you. You don't need to try to do anything. There, you don't have to stretch or bend or contort your bodies into uncomfortable positions. I'm here to guide you through gentle, easy practices that help you to feel better. These practices are useful tips that can help to ease the challenges that we have in our lives. You should continue with whatever medical care you have going because I always view things for myself at home as complementary rather, rather than alternative. Rheumatology and arthritis in Ireland, it's a problem. And I know for myself, it's been a big problem, but I didn't realize how prevalent it was. I was looking it up on arthritis.ie and the HSC website, and I was shocked when I learned that one in four people are afflicted with rheumatology issues. Now, rheumatology is a big word that a lot of people aren't familiar with. I, I was talking to a twin and he was saying, rheumatology, I don't know what that is. And I said, well, it's arthritis and other joint disorders. And he's like, oh, well, I know about that. So it's something where you may be more familiar with it if you have challenges in that area. And if you're not, you're very blessed. So um, rheumatology isn't bandied about so much in the news, but it's something that's been part of my life for a very long time. About 20 years ago, I was diagnosed with a um, immune disorder and it falls into one of those categories of rheumatology. And it was a whole learning curve for me. And it was a really hard time because I didn't feel well. I was tired. I, I woke up in the morning and I said, oh, I don't want to get up. It's going to hurt. And it just wasn't a great place to be. So if you are suffering with rheumatology or arthritis, my heart goes out to you. Because I remember when I felt like my whole body had rusted over and seized shut, kind of like the lock in the picture. So the image that I'm showing you right now is in the um, octagon shaped pictures or forms are all the types of arthritis listed on the um, arthritis.ie site. And then in the clouds are some of the effects that we have, some of the things that we have to deal with. It's a huge list and it's very broad. Some of the talks that I'm giving during the mind-body experience address other issues like um, if we have swollen joints and other things. But the ones that I'm going to help you with today are highlighted in red. So. Now, um, just to bring it back, I just wanted to um, share with you that I, I'm, I've been cleared by my rheumatologist. That was such an exciting thing. Um, he said, ah, you can go. And I'm like, I don't have to come back. He said, ah, come back and see me every couple of years. So I do that and I still mind myself. I make sure that I get my rest, I get exercise. I do other things to reduce the inflammation like I do yoga and of course I practice Jin Shin Jitsu. So all these things have me focusing on what I want to do in my life instead of how my body feels all the time. So I invite you as we start our practice of Jin Shin Jitsu is just to notice how you're feeling. How is your body? Is it really creaky? Is it really rusted over today? Or is it more fluid? and able to move. So make a note because this can give you a good comparison if there's any changes. I always like to do that because I remember I was going for sessions for a long time and I didn't realize that I had improved. And then the practitioner invited me to remember how it was before and so much better. I'm so grateful. And this whole, oh, sorry, I was supposed to advance my pictures. 
So I will do that. Um, the joys of technology. So I invite you to hold the center of your palm. Just simply, you don't have to press. You don't have to hold it in a certain way. If you want to hold it this way, you can. If you want to hold it this way, you can. The energy will move in your body as you remind it by simply touching that place on your body. And you don't have to rub, you don't have to press, just gently cradle your hand. Now this particular hold helps with all the fun functions in your body. Now I had a client not too long ago. It reminds me of when she came in for the session and I knew as soon as her face appeared on the screen during the Zoom call that she wasn't feeling great. And she shared with me that she was stiff and achy. And she also told me that her right foot was really bothering her. It's something she had mentioned in other sessions and it did tend to flare up sometimes. So what I did during that session was I focused on releasing the tension and helping the energies flow through her body. In Jin Jin Jitsu, the energies that flow through the left hand help the right foot. Sounds strange, I know. I could go into it in more detail in a, a proper self-help class. This is just a quick introduction. So we had our normal chat and then she slipped off her shoes and lied, lay down on her couch and pulled a nice fuzzy blanket up on top of her. And to be honest, she drifted off during the session, which I always take as a great compliment because it means that the person's relaxing and healing. And when she woke up, she told me she felt much better. And I called her the next day and said, how are you? And she said, my foot is so much better. And that pain on my right side is gone too. And I'm like, you didn't mention that. So I'm really glad that the energy had the wisdom to bring that blockage out of her body and that the wisdom was there that she could heal, even though she hadn't told me the whole laundry list of what her difficulties were. It, it's wonderful and I'm so grateful for it. So Jin Jin Jitsu, it's a very foreign sounding word and it's a Japanese term. And there's different layers of understanding with it, but for today, the most important part is that by holding specific places on your body, you help it to remember how the energy used to be and you can feel better. You can be more calm and centered and grounded, more able to move about. So this art, um, it goes back to like the 1940s. And there's a Japanese gentleman, Jiro Murai, who was suffering from a terminal illness. And he was done for. He, the doctors had been all through everything with him and they said, we can't help you. So he retreated and for seven days, he held his hands and used mudras, which I'll go over with you. And he used his breath. And then after seven days, he was healed and he was able to return to his life amazingly. But his life had changed because he now had decided that he wanted to devote his life to developing the knowledge, to understanding, to exploring how this happened. I think any of us would feel that way if we had such a transformation. So after he returned to his life, he used all the knowledge that he had from the Japanese emperor's records, all the ancient knowledge from centuries. And then he did case studies is what we would call it now. Um, what he referred to it was to helping individuals who came to him with specific health problems. And he would experiment and see, okay, does this help? Not so much. Does this help? And it did. And then he developed a formula of set places on our bodies that it can help us and set sequences that can help for specific concerns. 
And he, during the time he was doing all this studying, he shared his knowledge with some students. And one of the key students is the other lady that's here in the picture. She's Mary Burmeister. And she was an American, but she was of Japanese descent. And she was over in Japan doing some work and studying and translating for people. And she met Jiro Morai. And she was very intrigued. What is this man doing? And she became one of his students. After a few years, she emigrated back to America and she continued studying and adding her contribution to this art. And she shared Jinshin Jitsu throughout the world. So far that it's come to Ireland and it, there are practitioners in just about every country. And then there's people who've learned self-help or self-care and they practice throughout the world. So her vision was to have two practitioners on every block. I don't think we're there yet, but we're working on it. I've also included a picture of the Meridians here. You might be familiar with them. They are the same Meridians with a few adjustments that they use in acupuncture and also in reflexology. So we know that the energy pathways through our body are known and can help specific areas and functions in our body. And it's interesting to me how the wisdom from one modality is replicated through other modalities. So I, I love studying it and practicing it. I'm gonna bring you forward a little bit into modern times because there's two ways that you can experience Jin Shu Jitsu. The first one, you can learn self-care. And the way to do that is you can study the books. There's some books that are available for sale, or you can join an experienced guide to take you through the basics and some more complicated sequences that you can use to help yourself and to help others. So I would think of that um, kind of like a yoga class because I go to my yoga class and my teacher shows the moves and I do the same moves as well as I can. And by doing that, I can help myself and help my body. And then I can practice at home as well. So I would see self-care sessions and self-care workshops as kind of like a yoga class. Now, the other way that you can experience Jin Shin Jitsu is you can receive sessions from trained practitioners. And I qualified as a trained practitioner in 2013. So it's been a while and it's a lifetime study, but I would think of these as more like going to get an acupuncture treatment or get a massage. Because when I go for that kind of a treatment, I go in and I take off my shoes and I lay down a nice padded table and get my blanket, hopefully, if they have one, and I relax. And then the practitioner reminds my body how it was and how to heal. The nice part that I really like about Shin Shin Jitsu is that there's no needles. And like if I was getting a massage, I'd have to take off all my clothes and there's none of that with Jin Shin Jitsu. We take off our shoes just to be more comfortable, but everything else stays the same. So the other way, times are so different in, during the last year. We're not doing face-to-face -face things, we're staying safe. We're avoiding transferring the virus. So one of the things that I started exploring last year was someone told me that you could do distance or remote sessions. And I'm like, mm, really? So I started exploring it and practicing with other practitioners at first. And then after about eight months, I started offering it as a service to other people because I saw that it worked. I saw in the people that I was helping, I felt the difference in my body. For instance, um, I went for a series of sessions with a practitioner who's in Canada 
And after a few sessions, I realized I was sleeping better. I wasn't getting up during the night. Amazing. And I hadn't changed anything else in my life. So I firmly believe in the connection that we can make electronically and energetically, even when we're not in the same room. And the nice benefit too, the part that I really liked was that when you're receiving a session with distance Jin Shin Jitsu, you're at home. And I would just cuddle up on the couch and I'd have my dog next to me when I was receiving a session. Double bonus. So I could feel better and I could still be safe at home. So I'm gonna go through a few more um, tips with you so that you can help yourself further. And now, as I was saying, there's very simple ways you can help yourself by just holding your hands. There are more complicated ways as well. And I'm gonna share one of those with you because it's really the go-to hold for arthritis and rheumatology and joint stiffness. Now, I just wanna share with you that one of my clients said, I don't really like this hold for self-help. It doesn't really help me. It, it makes me more sore. So if that's the case for you, I suggest that you just hold your little finger instead. Now, if you're lucky to have somebody there who can hold positions on your body, brilliant, because all they would need to do is be on your left side and then they would put their right hand on your right shoulder on the top and also maybe down to the shoulder blade. And then they would put their left hand on your right elbow. Feels nice. So this is a way that we can ease joint pain and fatigue. But as I said, if this isn't comfortable for you, because some days it's not comfortable for me, I'm stiff, I'm sore. If my elbows or my shoulders are sore, I'm not gonna wanna go in those positions. And that's a day you like. Uh, if you wanna move with less pain, this particular hand position, it's a little more complicated than just holding a finger. If you take and put your middle finger and put the nail bed with your thumb pad, I hope it's clear in the image, and then you take your other thumb and put it into the middle. This is mudra three out of the seven or eight mudras that Jiro Murai used to heal himself. And this helps us to move with less pain. It also helps us to revitalize our whole being. So not only are we removing accumulations from our daily activities, we're also improving our energies, all of them in our bodies. So again, you can hold this with your, in this way, or you can hold it this way. Now I took a specific class on the mudras and the instructor said it's better to hold them as you see them. With the other practices in Jin Shin Jitsu, when we're holding a finger or thumb or a safety energy lock, it's a lot more flexible because I can hold my collarbones, which is another safety energy lock like this, or I can hold them like this. I can hold one or both, but the mudras are a bit more of a technique so you'd wanna try and have your hands in those positions. Now, other instructors have had different opinions and different experiences. So I suggest that you try it out and see what works for you. Because one of the things that I'm always reminded of when I'm reading the books or listening to instructor or practicing myself is that Jin Shin Jitsu is the art of the creator through the compassionate person. And to expand on that a little bit, it means that we are the artist. We know our bodies best. So we know how we can help ourselves once we learn these tips. And I find that some days I'll do things on the right side of my body. Other days I'll do on the left. And sometimes I even do things that help to reconnect both sides. 
Now, one thing I don't think I, I mentioned that I, I wanted to mention was about the safety energy locks because we do have our hands to help us. We also have specific places on our bodies that can help us to heal. And we have 52 from our heads down to our toes. We have 26 on the right hand side and 26 on the left hand side. So they mirror each other. And each of these energy centers, which are places that we're more likely to have tension and congestion. And it's a way for us to feel better. But each of these energy centers has a different function and a different purpose in our bodies. For instance, here helps us to adapt. And what I was showing you when we had our hands on our shoulders, on the top of our shoulders is safety energy lock 11, which helps us to unburden ourselves. And then the top of the shoulder blade is safety energy lock three, which is helping us to, with all of our immune issues. So each of them is very different. They almost have. So the last tip I'm gonna share with you today is holding our index finger. This helps us to have less stiffness. It helps to improve the flow of energy and our beings through our body. It helps with our joints. It also helps with our muscles because I don't know about you, but when my joints are tense, my muscles get tight to compensate because I don't wanna feel the pain and I, I tighten up. So holding our index finger can help us with that. And then just thinking back to where we were with this. I know I shared with you how I used to feel like I, my whole body was rusted up and how I wasn't feeling great years ago. But now the rheumatology issues and those symptoms have faded into the background. And I chose this image of the open lock because I feel like Jin Jin Jitsu unlocks the world to me. It lets me focus on what I wanna do in my life, where I wanna go and everything, instead of focusing on just the arthritis issues or the rheumatology issues. And I just find that to be really a blessing because back when I was in the worst state of my life, and my joints were very flared up and I was very fatigued. I didn't see any hope. And now I have hope and I'm sharing that with you. So just a couple takeaways for today, because I know that when I listen to a talk for 20 minutes, I tend to go, what did they say? It sounded really good, I understood it, but ugh. So the takeaways for today are, you can help yourself anytime, anywhere. And you could hold your center palm if you were sitting in a meeting, if you're sitting at home. You could even do it on public transport and no one would think anything of it. Now, granted, if you wander around like this on public transport, people might give you a look or two, but eh, I've seen stranger things on public transport. So the second point that I'd like to have you take away today is that there are physical takeaways available. If you would like to have a sheet showing these tips with what I've said as well, I'd be happy to send it out to you. Just let me know. And then the third point is that if you'd like to experience more Jin Shin Jitsu with me, you're very welcome to book a session for me. I'm doing remote sessions currently or a self-care workshop. I think the next self-care workshop is in about two weeks and I'm planning to focus on immunity and arthritis in that workshop. The following month, I think I'm gonna be doing um, anxiety and things like that. So you'd be very welcome to book into that. And my contact details are here because you can reach me by phone or on the web, whether it's through my website or on social media. And what else was I gonna say? Um, oh, right. This is another safety energy lock that helps us connect with profound knowledge and when we've forgotten things. So there's another little bonus tip. 
I, I'm going to be giving talks throughout the Mind Body Experience events. I think they're every two weeks, and they'll focus on different concerns that people have. One of them is sleeping well. Another is um, memory issues. <laughs> And another one is decreasing anger. And then one of my favorites is increasing serenity. So there'll be a wide range of topics and you can see those. There's information on my website and on my social media pages. And then I think they're also on the mind body experience. So I hope this has been interesting. I hope it's been helpful. I hope you're feeling a bit better.